Today we're going to be talking about seven signs of family curses. Seven signs of family curses. We're going to be talking about breaking generational curses. You know, there are things in life that you wonder, how come? Y'all ever been to that place where you're like, how come? I just stomped this devil's behind in this situation And now I'm finding myself back here again. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking, y'all, generational curses are insomnia. Like you can't sleep at night. You're sitting there like looking at the wall, trying to figure out the world, and you ain't going to get nothing done anyway by staring at the wall. It can be insomnia. It can be overeating. It can be divorce. It can be pornography. You women are walking around mad at your husband because he's watching porn. Why don't you just get your behind in the prayer closet And begin to take some things back by force. You know what I'm talking about? That man is struggling with generational curses. And generational curses are real. But you have the power on the inside of you to break those generational curses off of you. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you accepted Jesus into your heart. All all things are passed away and now you are made new. What does that mean? That means you ain't got to walk around one day up and one day down. You got the power on the inside of you. You don't need me to lay hands on you. You don't need Pastor Mark to lay hands on you. You don't need Dr. Ann or Dr. Henry to lay hands or Bishop Carnes to lay hands. All you got to do is get sick and tired of being sick and tired and begin to take back everything the devil stole. Take back your peace. Take back your joy. Take it back. Take everything back. I don't know about you, but my Bible says, listen, I just got off a fast, so y'all going to have to help me preach today because I'm just saying, because I am preaching today. The Bible says all of these promises that are inside of that word is yes and amen. Damien, he didn't say, I'm going to allow you to do some of these, and then I'm going to let you not have some of these. I'm going I'm to give her some more anointing than I've given you. No, we all walk around with the authority that we want to walk around with. You want to be depressed? You're going to be depressed. You worried about you dying of cancer because your mama and daddy and everybody else are dying? You, you, you're going to die of cancer. You worried about dementia falling on your family? It runs in my family. I'm talking, uh, everybody has died of dementia. You know what I did? I started walking around my house, speaking over my mind. I shall keep a clear mind. I will not have a me- mental issues. I will remember what I have read every time I start to read that Bible because I was in special ed. Y'all know that. I have a hard time remembering what I read. And when I started finally getting in love with Jesus at about 36 years old, after I was tore up on the floor but lost everything, at that moment is when I finally decided that I was going to begin to lay hands on my mind and be intentional. I'm not going to read this Bible because I ain't got nothing else to do. I want to read this Bible because I want it to be planted down on the inside of me so that when the enemy is starting to harass me, I can take him back by force. Family curses are reoccurring problems that steal, kill, and destroy. Scripture is clear. God visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children up to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 20 and 5. Curses don't visit your family without cause. When someone up in the family tree gives spirits the right to visit because of iniquity, they come looking for a reason to mess up your life. You got to take courage. After family curses are exposed... Christ's deliverance is readily available. You got to expose them. You can't walk around acting like ain't nothing going on. You, you can't walk around acting like, oh, I ain't got no addiction problem. I'm fine and you hiding in the closet every night. You know, people see your deeds, but God sees your heart. You walking around just shame to tell people what's really going on. And the Bible says that one shall put a thousand to flight, two shall put ten thousand to flight. You know, one can, when one, when two come together and agree, all things are broken in the spirit. That's why the enemy allows you to hold things inside of you because he knows if you ever start opening your mouth, when you start opening your mouth, Tell you got something to, you got something to pray for. When you start opening your mouth, you have exposed the enemy. You cannot choose your relatives any more than you can choose skin color, gender, or race. Someone up the family tree could be the cause for a generational curse. A family curse is a payment or recompense for iniquity. It is written, render unto them a recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. 
Give them sorrow of the heart, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of the earth. And that's Lamentations 3, 64 through 66. Before you can break generational curses, we need to identify what they look like. Here is a partial list of family curses for your review. Having one of these in your life or family may not indicate a family curse. To have several reoccurring ones might. The help of the Holy Spirit is vital in identifying a family curse. Let me help you out. Number one, y'all ready? Take your notes. Take your notes because 2017, we're getting equipped up in here. 2017, we're realizing that we got the power. 2017, we're not going to be walking around broke down and disgusted, honey. We're going to be delivered. Number one, emotional instability and fear. Emotional instability and fear. In the Bible, 365 times fear is written, do not fear. You know why? Because every day you're going to have something that you're going to have to look at and walk over even in fear. Fear will hold you captive. Brenda, fear will have you paralyzed. Deuteronomy 28 and 28 says, The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. The first curse that we're talking about today is an emotional instability. Notice the scripture in Deuteronomy 28 and 28 says, The Lord will smite with madness. To be smitten with madness means insanity, craziness, foolishness, irrational behavior, and flakiness. <laughs> I see some husbands looking at the wives. You know, y'all, y'all don't be looking at each other now. You're like, yeah, girl, you flaky. Yep, you're irrational. About every 28 days, you, your head starts spinning. He also uses the term blindness. This blindness releases confusion, indecision, and wonderment. If that's not enough, God follows that with astonishment of heart, meaning a trembling, unsettled, and fearless heart. Under this curse, one is easily overcome by emotions and fear. These trigger a person to make foolish decisions and do crazy, self-destructive things. In this condition, a person has a continual inner struggle, internal warfare, and frustration. Confusion and depression are two key indicators of their family curse. This curse teaches why some are double-minded and have problems ordering their lives with the word of God by renewing their minds. Because you don't know what to say. The fear is gripping. Did you know long before you were ever even a thought in your mother's womb, you were so important to God that he knew in August 29th, 1972, he knew that this little girl right here was going to come out butt first for my mama. Stand up, mama. Stand up. I want y'all to see. That's a joke. She like five foot tall and 99 pounds soaking wet. And God knew that I was going to come out in 1972, and he knew that I was going to take some wrong curves. See, he already knew that I was going to walk through divorce. He already knew that I was going to lose everything at 36. He already knew that I was going to be twerking on the bar and not praying. He already knew all of these things, and he said, but in in 2006, I'm going to turn things around for you. See, so the enemy knew this, so he was trying to take me out. He, he allowed me to come out and it be sickly my whole life and have tumors. And my mom and daddy had to pray over me. Then I had a special ed situation happening in my life. He kept wanting to take me out. Same as you. And you wonder why the enemy's fighting you. He's fighting you because there's, there's something very powerful on the inside of you. And he knows that one day you're going to wake up and say, I've taken a licking and I'm keeping on ticking. I'm about to get my bounce back. They gave me a free pass to lay down and die. But I'm about to fight my way back up. And devil, you're going to wish to God you would have taken me out when you could have. Because I'm about to come out. And when I do, I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to begin to decree a thing over my life that my will walk in the exceedingly abundantly more than he has ever. God has given you the exceedingly pass. Not barely get by pass. Not living in a marriage like, oh God, I married this joker and I got to live with him for the rest of my life. 
God's given you the exceedingly anointing. Where when that man lays down and goes to sleep, you can get some anointing oil and just lightly get some of that peppermint. He's snoring. Get some of that peppermint oil and just begin to rub it on him. Just begin to lay hands on yourself. When you feel the spirits coming out in you and you can't control that behavioral issues because of the generational curse, you begin to lay hands on yourself and begin to tell yourself to get your mind renewed. I'm not going to walk around falling apart every time something happens. The Lord told me last week whenever I was in the fast, something about the fast makes you you hear real clear. And he told me, he said, when people are walking around and one day they up and one day they down, they don't really know who I am. Whenever they falling apart, you're going to court. Then y'all calling me. Oh my God, Pastor Gail, I'm going to court and I'm scared to death. I'm like, for what? They can't steal your birthday. What are you scared for? You're walking in with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You're walking in with a ju- You might have done everything they said you did, but you're walking up in there and you are renewed in Christ. And he's given you the grace to do it. Confusion and depression are two key indicators of this family curse. My family has also struggled with depression. And every day of my life, even to this day, I have to lay hands on myself. Because there are days you don't want to get up. There are days that life is beating your behind. And you're like, God, I can't. I can't. I can't. I don't even know how I'm going to pay. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I, I don't even know. But you still get up. Every day you get up. Even when it feels like a turtle stuck in peanut butter. You still get up. And you still move that leg. And you still say, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But God, you said in Romans 8 that you're working all things together for my good. So I know you're about to turn this situation around. But I got to move in order for you to give me my breakthrough. I got to help you, God. Number two is hereditary family sicknesses. These are family curses. Hereditary family sicknesses. Deuteronomy 28 and 21 says, The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from all the land whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite Thee with a consumption and with a fever and with inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Some family sicknesses are reoccurring, reoccurring and the indication of a family curse. Notice the terms pestilence and consumption. The curse releases sickness of all kinds. Consumption is a wasting lung disease and emphysema, uh, COPD, and lung cancer. Lung cancer is a number, number three killer. It also uses terms fever and inflammation. These indicate a curse that in evidence by arthritis, inflammation, and the brain leads to Alzheimer's disease. Then we read the term extreme burning. Extreme burning means all sorts of strange fevers, the botch. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with hemorrhoids and with the scab and with the itch of which thou canst not be healed. Deuteronomy 28 and 27. Botches are open sores or boils. These are experienced for those that have problems with wounds that will not heal. Scripture also says the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch and cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot until the top of thy head. Deuteronomy 28 and 35. This curse attacks legs, soles, and the feet and the top of one's head. The Lord didn't leave any diseases out of this curse. He declared also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Deuteronomy 28 and 61. He says, I am going to smite these. This way you ain't got to walk on sick. Whenever you identify with everybody in my family has arthritis. Everybody in my family has high blood pressure. Everybody in my family has sugar diabetes. But this curse is about to stop right here. This depression is about to stop right here. You hear me, devil? This this depression that I've been walking around with and now I'm watching my kids walk around in it. Listen, you can mess with me all you want. But you start messing with my kids. (laughs) Woo, I'll go Medea on you in two seconds flat. I will have my shoes off and my heels off and I'll be taking my wig off and I'll be throwing it, honey. Like, come on. That's how I am the spirit with my boys. 
You don't mess with my kids. And whenever I started watching generational curses start falling beyond and beyond and beyond, I started realizing my kids are not going to walk in divorce. This is stopping right here. My kids are not going to walk in depression. It stops right here. My kids are not going to suffer with alcohol addiction. It stops right here. And every day I have to remind myself, honey, I take my stuff out and I start taking a no, no, when they ain't at home. Mm Mm-hmm. You start acting up in my house. You can stay, but you can get the Holy Ghost while you laying in your bed. You ain't going to know what's happening. Mama done got that peppermint oil, and I started laying it. Hey, I just used essential oils because that's all I had. And I started laying hands on everything, and I went incognito, so they didn't even know what was going on. I didn't leave nothing, so they didn't know no residue was there. But I began to take back everything the devil was trying to steal. I was taking back their peace. I was taking back their authority. I was taking back their sanity. Number four is, number three is barrenness, impotence, and female problems. These are generational curses. These are real. I know it stinks. Listen to all this. But whenever you have knowledge that you got the authority over this stuff, right? Barrenness, impotence, and family and female problems. Cursed, Deuteronomy 28 and 18 says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Perhaps you have heard menstrual problems know as the curse. Sometimes folklore comes from biblical tradition. Menstrual problems may be the result. Men are in here going, oh God, don't talk about this. It happens. Like we we got to talk about it because we have the authority to break off these things that are going on in our bodies. You ain't got to walk around bare. The Bible says that he fills your womb. But you got to know how to lay hands on yourself in order to get yourself free. Instead of worrying about it, you get up and start praying about it. Number four is family breakdowns and divorces. These are all generational curses. You wonder why every woman in your family is divorced. I know somebody that's got five sisters, all five divorced. They all, like, I don't know who's going to wipe their behind when they get old. I'm like, y'all better get your mouth under control because somebody's going to need to, like, help you when you get old. Family breakdowns and divorce. This curse manifests in several ways, including divorce, family divides, fights among the relatives, <laughs> Families that are scattered, no fellowship, jail children, and it's strange relationships. Deuteronomy 28, 30 says, Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather their groups thereof. The divorce rate in America is 50% for first marriages. Man. 67% for second marriages because y'all ain't getting healed for you jumping into the next marriages. I'm talking to myself. 74% for third marriages. What? According to the Forest Institute of Professional Psychology, in Japan, the divorce rate is 27%. Singapore, 10%. And India, 1%. What? Children are also affected by this curse. Deuteronomy 28 and 32 says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given un- unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The iniquities of the fathers are visited on the children. Here are the stats of family breakdowns. Y'all ready for this? Y'all say, yes, ma'am. 1.2 million children are born in fatherless homes. 1.8 million children are latchkey kids. 36% of kids grow up without a father. 75% of kids on drugs come from single-parent homes. 63% of youth suicides come from single-parent homes. 70% of teen pregnancies come from single-parent homes. 75% of jail juveniles come from single parent homes. Number five is lack, poverty, inability to produce. Deuteronomy 28 and 17 says, Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. 
Deuteronomy 28 and 29 says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as a blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. This curse is curse on finances. A kneading trough is where food is prepared. I liken this to the ability to produce. Production is a vehicle towards wealth and building. Under this curse, one's ability to get wealth is stopped. Have you ever seen, and you just feel like, man, my mama, my daddy suffered. They're on food stamps. So now I guess I'll be on food stamps. And you're just, you're just fine living that way. And you know what? I was on food stamps one time before, so I'm not critiquing anybody. But you got to get to a place where you realize this is not where I'm staying. I might need some help right now because that's what it's there for, but I'm not staying here. This is just part of my message. This is part of my testimony. I'm going to get up one day and tell that single mama that can only eat romaine noodles every night and pray that she even has some of that, that it's, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Poverty is not having what you need to do God's will. It is not the blessing of God to, have the means, to not have the means to accomplish his plan in your life. A person under the curse will squander waste and get further in debt and bondage. They are candidates for get-rich schemes of all kinds. They just want a quick fix. The blessed man is not focused on material wealth, but on fulfilling their purpose in life as they keep and follow the commandments of the Lord by putting first the kingdom of God. It's literally saying, you know what? I don't have the money to tithe. I'll never forget. Whenever I was a single parent, I was barely making it, y'all. And I remember I had an issue with tithing. I was like, I can't tithe. I can't even rub two nickels together. But you know what? God always got his money. Because I would get the I was the girl that got pulled over by the pullover law. Y'all know what a pullover law is? I didn't know what a pullover law was. Broker than a joke. And I'm the one that gets pulled over by the pullover law. $550 later. And I, my daddy tells me, he says, baby. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not telling you got to tithe now. But, girl, God going to get his money. <laughs> he can't keep the devourer. You know, something happens when you tithe, girl. He hides. He's a fence against those police. He hides you from those police. He allows somebody to drop $100 on the ground. What? Buddy, I started tithing. I ain't never had a problem since. I ain't never had a problem since. Me and my baby believe tithing, honey. And when we start our building fund in two weeks, me and this man right here, blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. We will be the first to give $13,000. When just two years ago, I was at Bloomingdale's making $400 a week. What? What? But because I started getting my life right and I started breaking some generational curses off of me and I started being the head and not the tail and the top and not the bottom and I decreed a thing over my finances that I will be a lender and not a borrower, that I will not be struggling. Buddy, I learned how to prophesy. What? That's why the Bible says that life and death are the power of your words, not my words. Y'all can come to church every Sunday and still be broker than a joke. You can still be tore up from the floor up. Until you finally say, you know what? I got to help pastor. I got to get myself unbroke over here. I got to stop, allow myself to have my own little pity party. I got to get myself up, stop being a victim in my own story. And I got to begin to walk like a champion. I got to begin to walk like I'm a victor. I got to begin to walk and decree. I may not be out of this hole today, but one day I will be out. And I'm going to praise him all the way, all the way, all the way to the finish line. Number six is no ambition, vision, or direction. Woo! Y'all don't be looking at your spouse. There's some of you in here going, "Mm -hmm, I knew that was a generational curse. Well, let me just tell y'all something. If you recognize there's a generational curse on your family, I'm giving you the instructions, and I'm going to tell you how to break it too. (laughs) We got to know what we're fighting with here. Number six is no ambition, vision, or direction. You ever met those people? They ain't got no ambition. They laying on the couch, scratching their behind, wanting to win the lottery. Pay, they paying that lottery. <laughs> they waiting. I will stand behind people getting them lottery tickets in line. Go, you got to be kidding me. Like, I'm trying to get to church. 
And they're like, I'll take four of those and six of the jackpot. And, oh, just guess some numbers. Okay. Lord, give me the numbers. Give me the numbers. Oh, let's say seven, seven, seven. It's a year of new beginning. Oh, eight, eight. Oh, it's a year of fulfillment. Want to do it? I feel good about this. I want to win a lottery. So I ain't got to go do nothing. Ha, <laughs> ha. Can I tell y'all when y'all get up and you start walking in your purpose, what? All of a sudden, you feel so good. So I always take off like the beginning of the year to get myself revamped, right? Because I'm gone every weekend. Starting in February, I'm gone. Like two and three states in a weekend. And then I, I fly in red eye to get back here because I don't miss my Sunday services. So listen. I ain't, I'm feeling like, like I'm so sold out for Jesus now. I can quote the Bible left and right. Like I got, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to hit the road again. So you know what? I was like, okay, God, give me some ideas. So I was on Periscope, Facebook Live. We're talking about why you ain't got to be broke. I'm like, you can go to the thrift store. You can buy you some blue jean coats and you get you some puffy paint. You know what I started doing? I don't allow myself to get idle. Because remember, my whole family struggles with, the, with, with depression. What? So I started getting me some puffy paint. My husband laid me out all his drop cloths. My whole, my whole living room looks like I'm, I'm painting. Every, I better get back on the road because everybody's going to be painted in this church. Because I got ambition, I got vision, and I got authority. And I want to be a wealthy woman. I want to be able to show everybody else how to get it too. Y'all better go get you some puffy paint and go to the thrift store. Mondays is 50% off. It's funny how $100 ain't nothing for a dress in a store that's everything's $500. You go to the thrift store, if it's $5, you're like, oh, that's too expensive. Ooh, I'm going to wait till, and my sons are thrift store shoppers too. What? They send me coupons. Mom, if you're going to the thrift store today, today's 50% off, girl. I was the only one walking up in the thrift store leaving with $58. Who spends $58 in the thrift store? Because I didn't go on half price Monday. But I do now. I see y'all all there tomorrow. <laughs> Number six is no ambition, vision, or direction. In Deuteronomy 28 and 29 says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. I have met those that have no internal vision for their lives. They set no goals and are blown to and fro by life circumstances. This curse is revealed in those without ambition. They go aimlessly through life. Ambition is a strong desire to make a difference with your life. It's a vision, dream, or aspiration to succeed. Those under this curse care less about tomorrow. They are without hope and terribly negative. This is why a lot of addictions happen. Because you ain't got no vision. You like, I just get my paycheck on Monday. Y'all was half of y'all waiting for the tax return. Y'all already got your fur coat bought in your head. You, are, you ain't saving for no rainy days. Because all you're trying to do is fill some voids in your life when God is the void filler. Number seven is bondage and slavery. Deuteronomy 28 and 43, 44 says, The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. This person loses his individuality, liberty, and freedom. They are easily controlled and manipulated into a loss of identity. They lose their personal freedoms, can't make decisions on their own, and must get permission from their masters. <laughs> This person will look to other gods for provision and protection, lottery. Not until the Lord. <laughs> Psychics. They are faithless, carnal, and full of idolatry, entertainment, and anything that divides them from the Lordship of Christ. Knowing that God visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children up to the third and fourth generations have been quite a shocker for some. They have learned, however, that curses don't visit the family without cause. Because there's some power up in your lineage. There's some authority, honey, up in you. That's why you fight. The enemy is not fighting you because you're weak. He's fighting you because you're strong. Because, honey, you got something to say. Okay, so here's how you break them. You ready? You ready? 
See, some of y'all walking up in here thinking, oh, my God, I got all of those curses. Well, you about to break them. You about to break them because you ain't pitiful. You are powerful. Number one is recognize the curse. In order to get set free and stay free, you have to admit you have a problem. Mm. 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 That sounds simple, but we live in a day and age of denial. No matter what has happened to us in our lives, each of us are responsible for the choices and decisions we make. If you really want to be free, you will accept the responsibility. When I got divorced, I probably drove that ex to drink with my mouth. That's the truth. Because I was raised in a religion that said women need to sit down and feed their husbands. And I was trying to prove that I was different and that I could make it. And I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to feed no man. He had two hands and two feet. He can get his own water. Now I got a man. I served that bell trickle. Well, well, what? But you know why? Because I realized that I had this problem that did, I was afraid of letting anyone get close to me. Because if they got close to me, they'd probably abandon me like a lot of other people had in my life. And so I wanted him to know, I don't need no man. And y'all, y'all, all you women out there say, I don't need no man. He, you ain't going to have one. You, you ain't. And you know you want one. You want them big burly hands around you. That lady by there went, ah! That was for me. Number two is break the curse. Break that mess off of you. As we apply God's word and power to our life, and as we choose to walk in righteousness and obedience to God, the chains of the bondage will be broken. There are three steps to breaking a generational curse. You ready? Number one, give your life to Jesus. The blood of Jesus removes all sin. Y'all walk around like I'm just in living in karma. I'm just living in karma because of everything I did. I know that man's going, y'all, y'all sliding out of that bed when your husband goes to sleep and starts to you hear that first snore. You sliding up out of that bed, grabbing his phone and going into the closet. See if he's cheating. Mm-hmm. Some, some wives are looking at their husbands now. Number two, fight the battle with spiritual weapons, such as the word of God and the armor of God. And number three is regain control over the power of your will. When Jesus shed his blood, he brought back our willpower. Through the blood of Jesus, we can say no. We can tell our, I I am the queen of getting in my car. I can tell whenever, I tell you, every once in a while, I get a little feisty. And I just be looking at Pastor Mark, and he'll be doing that. I'm like, what you doing? What you looking at? What am I missing? Now, these little tweets hadn't hurt. They ain't bothered me one bit. But ever so often, I'll get that little mood thing going. I'll realize that sweet man right there, that man loves my lights out. That man serves me. He loves me. He prays over me. And I will get my tail in the car, and I'll be going down the road. Come out! I'd be laying hands on myself in two seconds flat because it ain't his problem. I'd do all kinds of stuff to drive him crazy. And you know what? He just walks around and puts a toilet on the thing. for. He just takes his little toothpaste and he just pushes it out. He never gets mad at me for these things. But you got to take authority and stop saying this is the way my mama was. He knew how I was when I got married to him. Why don't you just change it? Why don't you just watch that walk around? Everybody knew how I was when he married me, girl. Why don't you live in peace and change? I know it's tight, but it's right. Number five is, no, number four, number three. Y'all, y'all keep it up. I'm thinking y'all just quiet in here like, hurry. I'm trying to hurry because it's 1236. I was supposed to be done at 1230. Number four, uh, number three. (laughs) Give your life to Jesus. The blood of Jesus, this is number three. I already did it, y'all. I'm going to give it to you again. Give your life to Jesus. The blood of Jesus removes our sin. Fight the battle with spiritual weapons, such as the word of God, and regain control over the power of your will. 
When Jesus shed his blood, he brought back our willpower. Through the blood of Jesus, we can't just say no. Number four, reverse the curse. Reverse the curse. There are three keys you can use to reverse the curse and live in victory. Number one, recognize your enemy. Our battle is not with flesh and blood. Our enemy is Satan, and the battle is spiritual. Number two, forgive people who have hurt you. Y'all like, uh uh-uh. I'm not going to forgive him because I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm entitled to get him back, make him hurt like he made me hurt. How's that work for you? He don't even care. Like you, you blocking him. When you finally get a boyfriend, you unblock him. You want him to see somebody and want me, girl. See, you wish you would have stayed with me. He don't, he ain't even looking at you. He left. He left. He ain't staying away. He ain't. He ain't staying away thinking about you. Because rejection was God's protection. Because rejection wasn't necessarily someone wanting out of your life, but it was somebody that God needed out of your future. Because where he's taken you, they couldn't go with you. So reverse the curse. Recognize your enemy. Our battle is not with flesh and blood. Our enemy is with Satan and the battle is spiritual. Forgive people who have hurt you. And number three, treat causes, not symptoms. For example, insecurity, jealousy, or fear. Renew your mind. What does renew your mind look like? What does it look like? Some of y'all need to really get some renewing your mind juice up in you. When the enemy starts telling you that that knots cancer, you start saying, ha, ha, by his stripes I am healed. Every time the enemy starts coming in and making you have chaos and confusion and making your heart palpitate and you thinking you're going to have a panic attack, start laying hands on yourself. I shall live and not die. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm walking. I'm a victor. Change your thinking. I had a panic attack one time, and the nurse told me, start thinking about a beach. Because I took myself to the hospital because I'm a woman of faith. I walked up in the hospital, and she goes, I need you to think about a beach. I'm like, I'm dying. Think about a beach with an arm margarita. I don't drink. And then I started realizing, oh, my gosh, she's trying to get my mind off of that thing that's making my heart palpitate. That's called renewing your mind. She didn't even know she was being spiritual. But she was being spiritual. Number four is. Number Where am I at, y'all? Number five. Release the power of love. To become people whose lives are transformed by the love of God. We must not only get rid of what holds us captive and keeps us in bondage. But we must also be filled with love for God for self and for others. Unconditional love will release blessings to know more of the love of God in your life. Love those who have hurt you, those who have opposed you, and those who have sinned against you. Number six is develop a godly attitude. A good attitude does not make everything go perfectly all the time. But Matthew 5 and 45 tells us that God sends the rain on the, on the just and the unjust. But our attitude determines whether the rain will water the seeds of our harvest or wash those seeds away. Get serious about where you are going with God by getting your attitude lined up with the word of God. Number seven is align your words with God's words. Your words give evidence of your faith and they should reflect God's good purposes for you. And exchange your negative words for positive words. Exchange your negative thoughts for positive thoughts. And exchange your negative actions for positive actions. Number eight, accept God's acceptance. Jesus didn't come to condemn us or punish us. He came to give us hope. And our lives really can be different. We don't have to live under the burdens of pain. We don't have to live under the burdens of hurt, shame, and sorrow. All the power in the heaven is available to you and to set you free from the chain that binds you. There's no pit so deep that God's love is still deeper. I don't know what you walked in with today. I don't know the struggle that you've been fighting. I don't know if you got children that are tearing you up. I don't know if you got kids that are fighting addiction. You got them out of a bad situation and now they're repeating cycles. How can somebody repeat cycles when they've even been around that person you say it's called generational? 
But when you realize that God knew you were going to be here before you ever got here. And he gave you the grace to get through what you're going through right now. And when you start realizing that you are victorious. That you can pull down strongholds. That if you open your Bible and begin to read the word of God. Even if you don't understand the thus, these, and thous. If you get yourself a message Bible, you can go download the U version at Y-O-U-V-E-R-S-I-O-N. And it puts you on a reading plan. And it'll even remind you three or four times a day. Go read. I mean, dear my fast. Don't forget to read your awakening. I am. It's called accountability. And every how you got to do it, you got to realize. And you got to ask yourself in this place today. Am I repeating cycles of my life? Are you tired of repeating cycles? If you're in this room today and you say, Kim, I am sick and tired of repeating cycles. I want you to stand up on your feet. I ain't even going to lie, Kim. I got struggles that I'm fighting right now. I got doubt. I got unbelief. I'm struggling with pornography. I'm struggling with addiction. I'm struggling with depression. I'm struggling with insecurity. I'm struggling with worry. I'm struggling with fear. You got the power, baby doll. You got the power. I want you to repeat this after me. And even for you that were too embarrassed to stand up, don't you worry. God can touch you right in your seat. The reason I ask people to stand up is because once you stand up, what is brought into the light, the devil can't bind you no more. What? The devil can't fight you no more. The devil can't attack you no more. You have the power and the dominion, honey, to kick the devil back to hell where he belongs. So as I begin to pray over you right now, I want you to lift your hands up with your hands out like this. I want you to lift them as high as you can. Come on. As high as you can. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every attack. I bind every generational curse. I bind every depression. I bind every addiction. I bind every insecurity. I bind everything, Father, that is holding us back. And Lord, I thank you right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I thank you right now, Father, that you're healing marriages in this place. I thank you right now that all of my singles in this place, God, that are praying for the Boaz, praying for the Ruth, that, God, you have got them situated for their arrival, Father. Lord, I call our husbands back to you. I call our wives back to you, God. And, Lord, I thank you right now that we are relieved from the curse I thank you right now that Father from the top of their heads I want you to lay hands on your forehead come on lay hands remember you got the power I thank you right now Father from the top of our head to the soles of our feet we are set free we are delivered we got joy unspeakable and full of glory we're not going to fight the demons that ain't after us we're not going to fight the weapons that are not after us but Father we are walking in victory I command every spirit to be broken in this place Get your hands off of our children. Get your hands off of our lives. Right now in the name of Jesus, we are free. We are free. We are free. We are free. We are free in Jesus' name. 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 Come on and shout as hard as you can. I can't hear you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are free. We are free. We are free. Thank you, God. Somebody get free up in here. That's what freedom looks like, honey. When you get sick and tired, honey. Come on, Crystal. Come on, Crystal. Come on, Crystal. Come on, Crystal. Y'all don't know what she's been going through. You don't know the cost of the oil in her alabaster box. Get it, baby. You don't know. 
know what she's been going through, but I do. Honey, she just let go of a whole lot. The devil's been after her family. Over her, after her mind. See, you don't know what people are going through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for amnesia in our mind, God. Thank you for amnesia. God's healing a marriage in this place. You've suffered with adultery. God's healing y'all right now. Your marriage will be better than it was before. Your marriage will be better than it was before. The devil tried to break y'all, but God said, I'm restoring. I'm restoring. I'm restoring. I'm giving you back Joel 225. There's some men in here that have been struggling with pornography. God said, it is broken. It is broken off of you. That generational curse is broken off of you. Broken off of you in the name of Jesus. Wife, leave him alone. I hear the Lord saying, leave him alone. I got him. Leave him alone. I'm restoring him. Leave him alone. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all feel good. Y'all feel good. Y'all feel good. Are you so glad you came to church? I'm so glad you came to church. Y'all go back and watch the live feed, C-O-T-H-F dot life. My husband preached a masterpiece today. Y'all watch it. Watch, watch it. Go back through because you're going to be delivered this week. Listen to me. When you have walked through something for so long... It takes a process. All right? We think God's a genie in a bottle. He's supposed to just like twinkle our nose and... No, it's a process. It's every day. Renewing your mind. Putting one foot in front of the other. You're going to fall again, probably. You're going to get back up, right? You're going to get back up. You're going to dust yourself off and realize there's a little bit more of your testimony right there. All right? 